sheets. Those are available. I'll have them sitting on the back uh, table. If you want to take some, they're $10 each. The prize list is, is on the ticket. Lots of good and interesting prizes. That helps fund our district activities. So I'd encourage you to, uh, to partake in that. And now I will lead it to Jack Marsh. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Dave. Uh, I'm Jack Marsh. I'm a member here at Sioux Falls Downtown Rotary, also a former president. And it's my privilege to uh, moderate this discussion with two of our legislative leaders today. The South Dakota State Legislature is now heading into its final stretch. Uh, three weeks to go, I believe, is correct. Uh, tomorrow will be the 25th legislative day in a session that lasts for 38 days. So we are pleased to have uh, senators from both sides of the aisle, in fact, uh, senators who are in the leadership on both sides of the aisle, uh, beginning with uh, uh, Senator uh, Chris Langer. Uh, Senator Langer is from District 25, uh, lives in Del Rapid, South Dakota, and represents uh, Minnehaha County. Uh, she is a realtor, spent uh, two terms in the House before joining the Senate, serves as the chair of Senate Local Government, also serves on the Judiciary Committee and the State Affairs Committee. So we're, we welcome uh, Chris, Lang uh, Chris Langer. Uh, and Chris's leadership position is that she is among the, well, she's one of the majority whips on the Republican side of the, of the State Senate. Uh, at the far end is uh, uh, Senator Billy Sutton. Uh, uh, Senator Sutton is uh, from District 21, representing Bonham, Charles Mix, Gregory Tripp counties. Uh, he's an investment consultant and a rancher, hailing from Burke, South Dakota. He is the minority leader of the state Senate, and uh, in that position is the top elected Democrat in public office in South Dakota. I think that's correct, Billy. <laughs> uh, Senator uh, Sutton serves on government, op government operations and audit on the Joint Committee on Appropriations and on uh, state affairs. So did I miss anything critical in the, in the uh, introductions? Well, let's, let's get right into some uh, issues and then we want to allow enough time for Rotarians to ask some questions as well. Uh, last week, uh, the Appropriations Committee uh, received word that the projections for revenue are a little bit brighter than originally thought. Uh, we have another $19 million to work with. Let's hear from both of you as to what you think the priority should be uh, in applying that $19 million in unexpected uh, revenue. Senator Sutton? Sure. Well, uh, it is better than what we had, the governor had projected in uh, his budget address. And so the, one of our main priorities, at least, is to focus on uh, fulfilling uh, our education need. Uh, it's 3% or CPI, whichever is less, and the governor proposed a 0% increase based on the revenues we had. And so now that we have uh, that extra 19 million, I think the first priority needs to be funding our K-12 schools up to that, uh, that minimum. Senator Langer, do you agree with that? I would say our caucus has a different opinion. Uh, our, our caucus is really focused right now as our main priority, not that education is not, I would say our main priority is those community service providers that are really struggling to keep people hired to uh, just keep, keep them working and keep their doors open. So we really need to look at um, how we can fund them better. We also are, are looking at our state employees and we know that it's, it's tough to find good employees and it's really tough to keep them if you can't give them a raise. And we re also realize that living in peer is not ideal. There's not too many people that say they I think Billy and I run away every weekend when we, when we get to leave Pierce. So unless you're really a hunter or a sportsman, it's really tough to find those quality people that want to stay. So I would say Or those, if you want to be governor. Oh, right, or if you want to be governor, then it's not so bad. <laughs> but, uh, but that's kind of where we're at. Not that education is not among those, but I would say it, it's one of the top three. So the Republican caucus is favoring an, an increase in pay for state employees? Yes, state employees and Medicaid providers. So uh, when, when's the last time the state employees received a pay raise? been two years. This would be the second year without if they didn't receive. And in fact, some of them are going backwards because of increased health insurance costs for, for their dependents. So Senator so. Sutton, do you think that uh, there should be some attention paid to increasing state employee pay? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would agree with a lot of what Senator Langer said uh, as far as the top three priorities. Um, and and I, I think we certainly agree with that. Uh, community support providers are incredibly important. And so are our state employees. 
And so uh, I, I think those are priorities that we agree with. So the two caucuses are aligned on that? I, sounds like it. Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> Not that big of a surprise, is it? <laughs> it might be. Uh, let's talk long term about uh, state revenues. Uh, how concerned are the two of you that we can uh, continue to depend upon primarily sales tax? I, I know there are, there are other sources of revenue as well, but how concerned are you about uh, future revenue stream for the state of South Dakota? Well, I'm actually pretty excited about our online sales tax. Um, South Dakota is leading the charge. Uh, Senator Deb Peters is president of the National Organization of State Legislators and was one of the first to, to get the lawsuit going as far as I think it's the state versus Wayfair um, to, to re receive some of those online sales tax dollars. We, especially as a small state, really suffer not having those. So I think we will see a, a big windfall potentially if, if that does come to fruition. We, Amazon has already um, willingly decided to give us some of those funds. But, uh, so I think, I think that will definitely help our, our state budget. Senator Sutton, we, don't, we can't predict how the U.S. Supreme Court is going to rule in that case of uh, South Dakota versus uh, Wayfair. So are you equally as confident that the Internet sales tax is going to uh, be a boon for the state? Oh, it would definitely be a, a boon for the state. The one problem we have is that when we passed the uh, education funding bills from a, a couple years ago, uh, there was a provision in that legislation that as uh, – if we were to get online sales tax and as it came in, it would actually decrease that half penny sales tax increase. And so that's something that's going to need to be addressed if we're going to have a conversation about how online sales tax affects our revenues because it would be a net net zero if we don't address the, that law from a couple of years ago. What about additional sources of, ta of tax revenue for the state? Are there any uh, taxes that the two of you are favor increasing or adding uh, to improve revenue for the state? You know, I, I don't at this time. I think we need to address the dollars that we have and make sure we're prioritizing those dollars. I can tell you this, over the last seven years, every single year when, when uh, at the end of the fiscal year, we put money in reserves. And so we've left money on the table every single year that is very difficult to get out of reserves once it gets there. And so we're, uh, for all intents and purposes, hoarding taxpayer dollars in that regard. And I think we need to do a better job budgeting or a different process for how we use those dollars rather than just going into reserves. Because there have been significant dollars put in reserves that could have been available to prioritize for, for important, uh, you know, important priorities like education, providers, and for our state employees. Do you ever see a time when the Democrats will uh, revisit the issue of a state uh, income tax? Not me. Along those same lines, I think we've worked really hard as a legislative body to create our own budget. Um, in the past, it's, it's a, a Senator Sutton has served on appropriations, and, and uh, it's a very tax, taxing, long process. But at the end of the day, we didn't feel like the legislative body had as much say as we should. It was more directed by the executive branch, and we were left with the leftovers, basically. And so we've taken a strong approach at to creating our own budget, um, having our own staff look at, so, so now we have our own legislative budget and, and we, we look at where the governor's budget's at and we look at ours and then at the end of the day, we, st we, we feel like we're getting a little bit more say in what happens at the end of the day um, with, those, with those dollars. So is the Republican caucus uh, in favor of any tax increases or any new taxes? Not at this time. So this fall, uh, there'll be an issue on the ballot uh, to increase the, the uh, tax on tobacco, I think a dollar a pack, right? And that money is to go to our uh, technical institutions. You oppose that, Senator Langer? You know, on a personal level, yes, I do oppose that. And my reason is, is that uh, another sin tax, although it doesn't affect me, what I see it hurting is those children of parents that are addicted to that because we can, we can tax them and give them have more money for our revenues, but we are hurting those kids that those parents are addicted to that tobacco and they're not, they're not going to stop smoking. So unfortunately, I'm, I'm just not a fan of syntax because of that. Senator Sutton, what's your position on the tobacco Yeah, I tax? think that, that one of the things that I go back to is the importance of letting the voters weigh in on, a, on an issue like this big. And, and I think that's where, where I'm going to be interested in seeing what the overall voters of South Dakota and how they fall on this. But um, Right now, I do think there are problems with, with the use of, 
of tobacco and the and how that is affecting our communities and our state. And I do think there are studies out there that show that uh, by increasing the cost, it's less used. And so I think it's an interesting discussion, but I want to see what the voters say on it if it makes the ballot. And will you, how will you vote, vote on that issue next fall? I haven't decided yet. <laughs> what about uh, uh, the counties in the state are uh, proposing an increase in the alcohol tax? For drink, uh, for drink tax, so to speak, um, and that because they, they are saying that uh, alcohol has uh, such a dramatic impact, or the abuse of alcohol has such a dramatic impact on the delivery of services from at the county level, uh, is that a tax that uh, tax increase that's going to uh, uh, be well received in Pierre or not? I will be surprised if that if that makes it out of out of committee. I'm not sure where that's at right now. I glanced at it the other day. Uh, to see what that looked like, but um, I'm not so sure that that the legislature or the general public in South Dakota is, is feeling like they want to support too many tax increases of any kind at, at this time, and that's why I'm kind of interested to see what happens on the ballot as we discuss the, the tax on tobacco. But I think there are a lot of South Dakotans that are feeling like they're having a hard enough time getting by right now, and and you've seen property taxes increase as well. Uh, I think there's a lot of folks that feel like that, that maybe more taxes isn't necessarily the answer, but we need to have a conversation about uh, where we're spending the dollars that we have right now. Senator Langer? I would agree with that sentiment. We are talking a lot about alcohol and peer this year, not as much tax as it is our three-tier system and how the distribution is being created and uh, a lot of changes with our craft beer and our wineries and how we how we meld that all together. So we've had, we've had a three-tier system in place for our alcohol for many, many years, and uh, there's some that want to see that kept, and there's some that want to see that um, changed a bit. So we're, we're seeing a lot of bills uh, around that and, and uh, trying to keep those craft breweries and those wineries afloat. There are a number of proposals in peer this session dealing with uh, initiative and referenda. Uh, putting restrictions on ballot issues, uh, a higher threshold for getting uh, 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 measures on the ballot, uh, and uh, uh, you know, here we are. We were, I believe, if I have, have my South Dakota history correct, we were the first state to take on uh, initiative and referenda uh, 120 years ago. It's in in some ways, it's a cornerstone of our democratic process here. In South Dakota, why, after 120 years, are we taking another look at it? What is what are the problems with being an INR state? We had a great task force this summer that was a bipartisan effort to try to really dig into these issues and figure out what the best solution is. And and uh, obviously, there's still some disagreement as far as what that is. I think what we were finding is that South Dakota was a very easy petri dish for some of these out-of-state organizations to come in and, and infiltrate. We have really cheap advertising, um, and we have you know a low population, so it was easy for them to get their word out. So we're just concerned that we really want South Dakota ideas on our ballot, that they're coming from the average South Dakotan and not from some outside group that uh, is, is pushing their own agenda. So to me, that was the, the nemesis for creating that task force. And we've seen several bills uh, come out of that. I think so far what has mainly survived is is the bills that have come directly out of that task force, um, not so much individual legislators. So Senator Langer, which proposals do you think will be passed by this legislature? Good question. Um, I think there will be some, we've had pretty good bipartisan support on um, one issue um, per measure. We've had good support on, we're really not quite sure where we're at on um, out-of-state funding, how much we want um, to come into the state because obviously, so you and I be working on an issue and I've got some donor that, that, that wants to help me with a South Dakota issue, I really don't wanna, I don't wanna make that go away, but yet how do we figure out if that issue is really a South Dakota issue? Senator Sutton? Yeah, I, I've been frustrated with this, with this discussion to be honest because um, it seems like uh, we trust the people to send us to peer but there does seem to be an attack on the initiated and re referendum process. Uh, I will say that 
I supported a fair amount of the measures that came out of the summer task force. And I think there was some good bipartisan legislation that made, you know, created a little more transparency, uh, made the process a little bit better. But then after that, there were, there's been at least 15 other bills that have sought to take away the voice of the people. And I, and I don't agree with, with a lot of those measures. And in fact, the problem that's being created is that you're going to create a system where the big money and the people from out of state are gonna have a leg up on your grassroots folks and your local communities in getting things on the ballot. And I think that's a problem that, that we're kind of creating with limiting South Dakota people's voice. So are you in favor of any changes? Yeah, I supported some of the changes, um, you know, more information on uh, the petitions, you know, a better, a better form for circulating those petitions and different uh, pieces like that that the task force came out with. Uh, but typically what happens when you have a summer task force that was, you know, bipartisan in nature and they came up with some good recommendations, that that's kind of the direction that we head and that a lot of these other bills that weren't vetted or were thrown out of the committee uh, will be defeated. And I, I haven't seen all those defeated yet, and actually some of them are, are moving through the process as we go along, and I, I think that's concerning to me. We had a horrific tragedy last week at, in Parkland, Florida, with 17 people killed. Uh, and it certainly has spurred a, a new national debate over gun control, gun safety, and mental health, uh, also uh, school security security for people uh, out in the public. What is South Dakota's proper response? That's a tough question. Uh, you know, I really think that our mental health system needs to be really, we need, we need to look at that very much. This individual, the student, was obviously crying for help. And we, whoever missed the boat, missed the boat and missed it bad. Um, to have the police called to that resident that many times, to have the FBI involved. Um, I think our mental health system is really at a crisis, and we need to figure out the best way to do that. I know we have, through the National Association of Legislators, we do have a task force that is, is looking at some of those issues, trying to figure out the best route to go. But um, to me, it's, it's, it's much bigger than a gun control issue. I think it's, it's getting parents involved in our schools. It's... it's uh, getting back to some of the basics and, and trying to not, not miss the kids that really are hurting. So should there be any changes in gun control laws in South Dakota? I really am not a fan of, of controlling the guns. I think, uh, you know, it seems like the gun-free zones are the biggest target. Um, when, when a shooter knows that they not ha don't have anybody to uh, protect them, uh, the, the kids inside there, that seems to be our our biggest issue. I, I, I know it's a, it's a tough debate, but I, I really think it's more of a mental health issue than it is a gun control issue. Senator Sutton? Yeah, I mean, we have a rich history of, of gun ownership in this state, and I think you would find that the vast, vast majority of people in South Dakota support the Second Amendment and people's right to, to bear arms. I think what we need to do is, is have a, a deep dive discussion with our schools and our law enforcement professionals on how we keep our kids safe. You know, we've been fortunate in South Dakota, there have been a couple instances of, of school shootings, um, not to the degree that maybe some of these other states have had, but the bottom line is, is we've got to find common ground on how we keep our kids safe. And I think that's gonna take, uh, it's not gonna happen overnight. I mean, this is gonna be a long process of finding uh, how we can work together to make sure that people feel safe sending their kids to school. Because I think you're gonna find out there in the public that a lot of, a lot of people don't feel safe. And, and when these things continue to happen, it, it's not acceptable. I would agree with Senator Langer on the need for mental health services. And that means, I think, in our schools, on the ground, and finding the kids that need help. Uh, and not just giving it lip service, because that's gonna take resources. And, we're all gonna have to agree uh, to focus on that moving forward. Will either party uh, favor any changes in gun control in South Dakota? I, I can't speak to that right now. I know that, that, I mean, we only have three weeks left in the session. Uh, 
we're, we're kind of running out of time for those. There are a number of gun bills uh, coming through the legislature, and, and this incident and other incidences could uh, have an impact on those conversations as it relates to our gun laws. But, but by and large, I think we've, we've done a pretty good job in South Dakota, and that doesn't mean that we should always be you know, having the conversation about how to keep our kids safe. But uh, I think, by and large, we've done pretty well in South Dakota protecting our kids. Infrastructure. Uh, President Trump has, has talked about it on a national level, that we've got a crisis with the condition of our roads, the bridges, dams, uh, our utilities uh, infrastructure as well. What about here in South Dakota? We have not heard a lot in this session about the condition of our roads, our bridges, our dams. Uh, is it, a, is it a concern? Uh, are we addressing it properly? Uh, or are we kicking the can down the road? Uh, we just, I mean, I think we dealt with it pretty well a couple years ago uh, with the governor's roads and bridges plan. And uh, we, we certainly have a long ways to go. Uh, but I think there's been a lot of improvements made. What I hear probably most is, especially in the area that I'm from, which is rural, very rural South Dakota, is that counties are struggling with, with the funding that they need for their roads. And that was one of my criticisms of the Roads and Bridges plan, uh, was that I don't think enough went to the local level um, to help with, th with their roads and bridges. And that's something that I hope to uh, affect as time goes on and, and maybe divert some of the, the dollars that the state got into our, our local level, because they kind of got the short end of the stick, I think, um, in that overall plan. Senator Langer? Yeah, I would agree with that. Our, I think we hear most from our county officials that just say they, they just, it's really tough to, whether it be the rural communities or right here in Minnehaha County, it's, it's the, the county's really, county's really struggling to, to get by. So if we can figure out a way to, to get them some more funds, I think we, we're all in favor of that. It's just the, the million dollar question of how to make that happen. Legislation dealing with uh, immigration and refugee resettlement is going to, uh, get a lot of attention this week. Uh, in fact, it's going to come before two committees that you serve on, Senator Langer. Uh, Senator Tapio from Watertown has introduced Senate Bill 200, which will be heard in uh, Senate State Affairs on Wednesday morning, I believe. I'll, re I'll quote from the bill. Uh, the state shall suspend all direct or indirect resettlement of refugees and refuse to accept chain migration into South Dakota from citizens of countries appearing on any federal travel ban list. Goes on to say those, those include Sudan, Syria, Somalia, Iran, Libya, Yemen, and North Korea. Senator Tapio, Neil Tapio, issued a press release on Friday in which he said uh, he was announcing that he's bringing some of the nation's leading experts on the refugee resettlement program to South Dakota to educate lawmakers about Islamic radicalization and the social and budgetary costs and community hazards of uh, Islamic refugee resettlement in American cities. I'm quoting from the press release. And he has a specific quote in here, and a, uh, quote, the end results are lucrative federal social contracts for Lutheran social services and a steady stream of tax incentives for a meatpacking industry that profits by paying their workers a slave wage and without any care about how it's impacting quality of life in towns big and small across the Midwest, end quote. Then on Thursday, uh, the Judiciary Committee will hear a bill uh, from uh, Senator Lance Russell, which he calls an immigration enforcement bill, which essentially as I read it, would say that any governmental unit or post-secondary institution may not block the enforcement of immigration uh, laws. So since this is going to be com come before you uh, and, a, and a committee you chair, actually, uh, Senator Langer, where does the Republican Party stand on these, on, on these two pieces of legislation? Let's begin with uh, Senator Tapio's Senate Bill 200. Well, let's just say the Republican caucus, at least in Pierre, is not behind Senator Tapio's bill or his resolution or the way that he's been going about his uh, 
his crusade. I think his heart may be in the right place, but the way that he's gone about it has not been been uh, very productive. You know, interestingly enough, having conversations with some folks in Aberdeen that obviously have much more influx of immigration issues, they don't seem to be having the issues that he's citing. So I, I think that's that's a big concern. I think we all we all realize that, you know, I, I just, in my opinion, I think the federal government has, is, that is their job to be working on right now. Um, and I, uh, I know uh, Senator Sutton and I have both uh, voted against uh, resolutions so far that have have dealt with this issue, and not that it isn't have some some cre credibility, um, but I won't be supporting it. So you'll be voting against Senate Bill 200 when it comes before the committee. Yes. And do you think that's a, that's the position of the Republican Caucus as well? I would say for the most part it is. We we probably have a some faction that uh, that is behind the legislation, but I would say it, it's a minority. The uh, Senate Majority Leader, I believe, is one of the co-sponsors of that bill. Well, I, I don't know how Senator Sutton's going to feel about this response, but sometimes we get judged pretty harshly for being co-sponsors. <laughs> um, we, uh, we don't necessarily look at uh, all that we should with this. So I, 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 although I believe Senator Kurd uh, meant well, he, I, I, I'm not certain that he will support the legislation either. Senator Sutton? Yeah, I mean, I, I just fundamentally uh, uh, disagree with Senator Tapio's assertions on this issue. I think that uh, the most important thing to remember in this conversation is that we have to continue to grow our economy and develop a workforce that can be the future of this state. And the fact remains that uh, we're not raising enough people on our own. We, we need folks coming to South Dakota to fill jobs and to help grow our economy. And this type of legislation is only hurting that conversation and actually is making us an unwelcoming state and an unfriendly state. And I think that's a bad precedent to set. Uh, one of the, my favorite things about South Dakota is that I can travel across this state and say that nearly everybody I meet is South Dakota nice. And I think that's something we need to remember is that we need to be a welcoming, encouraging, and thoughtful state. And these types of... Uh, <laughs> These types of legislation are only hurting that, and so I'll be opposing. Uh, I'll be opposing these types of bills as we move forward. So, Senate Bill uh, 193, which is uh, Senator Russell's bill, which he calls the Immigration Enforcement Bill, you will be you would oppose that as well, Senator Sutton. Yeah, I'm going to have to read that in more detail, but uh, from the outside looking in, that that is that is correct. And Senator Langer, will you oppose that as well? Well, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to say that. I have not studied that as well or been, uh, I'm not sure I have the, the right information to make a definite guess, but. What about uh, Senator Sutton's comment that this type of legislation uh, is, makes uh, South Dakota seem to be an, an unwelcoming state? Do you agree with that? I do agree with that. I mean, we, we need to make sure that when the message gets out about this, that we that we are a great, South Dakota is a great state. And not only are we a great state, we're a welcoming state. And so I think if there's bills that are hurtful and make people feel unwelcome, um, it's really not a good place for us to go. We'd like to open up the floor now to your questions. And there's uh, questions from Rotarians only, please. So if you would stand, raise your hand, we will get a microphone too. But we want to try to get in as many questions as we can from Rotarians. So. The floor is yours. Yeah. Hi, Michael. Yeah, please Huber introduce yourself. And, and uh, just to kind of associate. Can with you introduce the, yourself, Mike? Yeah, Michael Huber. And uh, <laughs> the question that uh, that I have is related to just what you were talking about. Is it seems like there is this assault on the initiated measures, and they don't seem to really be the problem. The problem seems to be like bills such as this, uh, the immigration one, that then make the state not look like a nice state. So. Maybe should there be more of an assault on those types of bills rather than an assault on the initiated measures? So the question is, what is your question then, Mike? <laughs> well, how, how do we change so that we're not having bills being introduced that are getting so much publicity that are not South Dakota nice? Well, well the, that's kind of a double-edged sword to the degree that what, one of the things I love about 
the legislature is that anybody can introduce any idea and every bill gets a hearing. You know, that isn't always the case in other states around our nation, so I think it's important and it creates a good dialogue. Uh, but you're right. I mean, those types of bills should be uh, defeated in committee w unequivocally. Uh, and, and that's just my belief. Uh, you know, as far as the initiated measure process, I, I don't think we have as big a problem in that vein as, as a lot of folks seem to think. I think we've done some really great things on the ballot, and I think for the most part, South Dakota gets it right. Um, and so that's where I'm at on it. Senator Langer? Yeah, I, I would just echo those sentiments. I think, you know, for the most part, and there's things that you probably don't, or you don't hear that do happen from Pierre where we have tabled bills such as that that have made it to the Senate floor, um, which basically means there's no debate. The motion's made and uh, we vote an up or down vote and most of the time that's, uh, we, we know that that's happening. So we do our best to try to keep those out of the limelight, but times it's, it's hard and the media likes to pick up on that and obviously with Senator Tapio running for a higher office, uh, he has tried to create that media attention. So otherwise, I, I'm not sure if it would have quite the traction that it does. Next question. Thank you, Jack. Dean Karski. Um, senators, local veterans associations have been working for years to establish a state veterans cemetery here in the area. And um, it, it's a long process. We're finally able to get to the top of the list on the federal government list. And here in the last few days, a, an apparent roadblock has been put up to come up with a $10 million endowment to cover all the operating costs moving forward for in perpetuity, the way it would appear. What is your position on funding a local veteran cemetery and state support for that? Senator Langer, you want to leave oh, off? Sure, our, our caucus from the, from the beginning of session has been behind the veteran cemetery and the idea behind it. So uh, I think that will remain our top, one of our top priorities as well um, to try to try to iron out those pieces and figure out where that roadblock is coming from and, and, and how to combat it. So would the state uh, consider funding that uh, endowment, which Dean is ten ten million dollars? The endowment is ten million, but not the state funding it, but waiving that requirement. Waiving that requirement. Right, because I, my understanding is that the veterans plan to self-support that. Um, basically, just be up to the state to say, yeah, we'll we know that you're good for the money, and so uh, I believe that by the end of session we will, we will see a new veteran cemetery. And is that the position of the Republican caucus? It is. Senator Sutton? Yeah, I support that. Uh, I'm on the Appropriations Committee, so we just heard this bill last week. Now, there was a Hog House amendment put on the bill that I think is what you're referring to. Um, this, there's six for those million of us who don't, or for those who don't know what a Hog House hog amendment house, is, yeah. can you? We could go into a pretty good history of you Hog House. We don't house, need the but, whole history, but just give a sense of what But basically, that is. what a Hog House means is just a complete uh, rewrite of the bill. So it's the, it's the same bill number, but it's, it's completely changed as far as uh, the meat of the bill. And so uh, in appropriations, I mean, we're looking at the federal government basically funding the building of this project and then the state potentially having to come up with a small amount of money for a short amount of time until the endowment gets off its feet and can cover the ongoing costs of the project. And so um, I was supportive of the bill as it was originally written so we can get this project going and off the ground. Um, I think the uh, amendment makes it a little bit problematic because they have to have the money in place before they can start building then. And I, I would hesitate to do that. I think we need to take action on this project now and get it going. And I, I think that's the least we can do. I think we're one of five states that doesn't have uh, a state, vet uh, state cemetery so for veterans. And so... I think it's time we, we get moving on it. Okay, question down, down front here. Could you, uh, when I read the, actually they're talking about $19 million just found out, um, kind of make me smile, and then my question's for you guys, that this is kind of miscalculated with the tax revenue, nobody know about it, or just somebody opened a book, here you go, $19 million in there, that's one. And second, really. Uh, let's, let's, take that, let's take that one. Go ahead. Yeah, I wish we could just open a, open the page and have 19 million more dollars, but um, that's based on the improved revenue projections. So as, as the governor proposed it back in December, we have another uh, almost three months 
of revenues that have come in that were higher than what we projected, and then that affects our future projections as well. And we're seeing that the economy is improving and that, that we're going to have more sales tax, which is about two-thirds of our state budget comes from sales tax. And so those projections are better than what the governor had proposed back in December. Senator Langer? I would just echo that. And coming back to uh, Representative Nell, uh, I personally talked to him about refugee, immigrant, and Muslim issue, and I challenged him to meet with him one-on-one -on -one in the stage and public invited in Sioux Falls or any city he chose. Yep. But sadly, until now, he didn't respond back to do that one-on-one -on -one issue about that. Thank you. Next question. While we're waiting for the next question, I'll, I'll pose one. Uh, uh, the House has passed a bill to uh, uh, ban uh, unions at their public uh, universities. Uh, it's now going to the Senate. Uh, is it time to do away with collective bargaining uh, at our state universities? I don't think so. I'm, I'm going to oppose that at this time. I mean, I, I'll certainly listen to the, to the debate, but um, I think that's also a conversation about making sure we get the people here and in the right positions to, to do the work for South Dakota that needs to be done, and it's going to put our universities at a disadvantage as it relates to states around us. Senator Langer? I would say I'm more open to the idea. I, I need to listen to the testimony and, and uh, hear more. I know some of the frustration is, uh, you know, we need to make, we need to make sure that um, our professors are protected, but also that our students are getting the best opportunities to learn as well. So there's, there's a, a mixed bag there of the good and bad. So are you undecided? I am undecided, but I'm leaning towards supporting it. Supporting the bill. Yes. Hi, Tom Kelly. See, um, we talked about some of these um, nonsense bills um, towards um, immigration and, and, and so forth and said, well, we can actually get any bill forward, um, which is what you like about South Dakota. I would hope that I know it did not pass through committee, so it went to summer study, but I would hope that the two of you would support um, one of the bills that were up there was to actually allow um, driver's license exams, um, the written exams, to be taken in another language other than English. That is a hurdle. You know, we talk about these immigration laws of tapios. They're just putting more hurdles up. So it's time that we... Let's, let's, go, let's go with that question then. So should uh, the driver's license exam be available uh, in Spanish and other languages besides English? Yeah, I don't, I don't see why not. I mean... Uh, I don't have a problem with it personally. I think that we have a diverse uh, society, and I think we should be uh, reflective of that with our with our laws. Um, Senator Langer. Well, if, although I agree with him, I think it becomes a much bigger issue. I think when when I was uh, visiting with uh, the the department about that, they said there's something like. 38 different languages or maybe even higher than that, that they would be required to figure out, try to find a translator, try to find, um, because you can't just exclude, you can't exclude anyone. So um, it, it's a challenge. So do you favor offering a driver's license exam in other languages? I'll, although I favor it, I find that there are, are a lot of obstacles in the way. Well, yeah, and I think the bill, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the bill just allowed for other languages to be used. It didn't say anything specific about that. I know there's been some, you know, there's 48 states in the union now that um, we're only one of two states that does not allow this. So that's quite unusual. And Hawaii just became um, the 47th state to, or the 48th state to have it. And one of the things that was disappointing, I saw there was some numbers bounced around of about a half a million dollars of appropriations to make this happen. Um, if we do some research, Hawaii did this very thing, and they end up spending $10,000 to introduce um, Spanish into their driver's license exam. So I think it, you know, I just appreciate further study on it. I think it's worthwhile, and I think there's many other things that we can do um, worthwhile to make this a more welcoming state. You know, we, we, um, it's a life we live. It's the spice of our life is having all the diversity that we have, and we need to, we need to love it, embrace it, and work hard to help um, knock down some more of these roadblocks. In Sioux Falls, 18% of the population is, is not white, not English speaking. And in our school district, is 34% is not white, not English speaking. So uh, folks, it's our future and we need to, we need to love it, embrace it, and, and start moving things in the right direction. Thank, Thank you, Tom. We have time for one more question. 
Who wants the last question? Right in the back there. So I know South Dakota's constitution says we can't be in deficit, basically. Like we can't have a state deficit. What happens to South Dakota constitutionally if we like continue to be in debt, basically? Just a random question. Well, we're required to pass a balanced budget, so um, it, there is no option for us. I mean, it, we have to follow the constitution. I think we all believe that. We all need to pass a balanced budget, and that's why uh, based on the revenues we had back in December, that there were no increases for K-12. There were no increases for providers except for some community support providers. And there were no increases for state employees because we just didn't have the dollars available to propose increases and have a balanced budget. And so with these new dollars available, we'll be able to uh, target those investments and still balance our budget at the same time. And so I don't think it's an option for South Dakota to not balance its budget, and we'll continue to do so. Senator Langer? I disagree with that. Yeah, we uh, work hard to, to, to have that balanced budget, and we have a AAA rating because of it uh, with, with creditors, so it, it, it's an important part of our state. We want to thank you all for uh, taking time out from your holiday to be with us uh, for this uh, very interesting discussion between the respective leaders of uh, our state legislature. And uh, just like to ex extend personal appreciation to Senator Chris Langer and to Senator Billy Sutton for joining us on a rare Monday off during the legislative session. I want to repeat what Jack said. Thank you both, you two senators. We appreciate not only the sacrifice you're making in public service, but the sacrifice your families are making. Having had several elected officials as clients, I, I know from their stories, how much your families are both sacrificing. And thank you for 